video number three. Hey guys, it's Chris Blasius, and I was going to do some outside speakers, that's why I told you in my last video, but it's been raining like crazy in Ohio, so I thought I would move on into the interior and answer some questions that some of you have had for me. And the one question I had, which last week from a YouTube guy, was what radio am I using in my car and what do you recommend? So I thought this would be a good time to show you. Sorry about the lighting, it's really hard to shoot a video in my garage, but hopefully you'll be able to see it and I'll try to be as still as can be. So when picking out radios, I had a lot of different choices to choose from and I pretty much had two radios narrowed down, one of them being the Kenwood touchscreen. I think it's the Kenwood like 9200. It was pretty awesome touchscreen. Um, it was a dual den. It had navigation, which I thought would have been pretty sweet to tie in with the technology of Knight Rider. And I almost clicked the checkout button and with me being as I guess quote unquote anal about 82 parts as I am I don't think I would have been happy with that because with everything else in the car looking so retro I felt like the Kenwood almost looked too modern for the car so I almost used just the stock radio and then there was a lot of downside to that too because there's a lot of modern features of radios that's really nice and then literally out of nowhere I found this radio which I'm reviewing today and I couldn't be more happier about it. Um, this is the Retro Sound. And the cool thing about the Retro Sound is that it's one of the very few radios that come in a 1.5 den, which is actually what our cars have. So if I would have done a dual den, as I know it's hard to see, but the casing around the radio, I would have had to get an aftermarket one, which would have taken away from, in my opinion, the stock lookingness of this. They do a pretty good job, but it does widen the gap so that the bigger radios could fit. So I wanted to keep my stock um, trim plate around the radio. And the thing that really sold me to this is that this radio literally looks like it's from 1982, but it does have modern features. So I'm going to show you some of those. So I hit this button right here. I'm just going to turn the radio off. You press and hold. It says goodbye. It gives me the time, which that's not the correct time. It's not 1230 in the morning here. It's more like 7 at night. But when I press the radio on, it powers my amps on and says retro sound and then goes to the radio. So I actually don't have the radio hooked up in my car. To um, be screen accurate, you got to get rid of the antenna and weld in the hole on your um, passenger side fender. And I never relocated the antenna because I figured that I really didn't need it. I know some people put the invisible antenna or it's like a little skinny antenna under their headliner. I'm sure that works awesome. My car doesn't have that. Um, but it does have a lot of other cool functions on this head unit. So there's a knob up here right above your volume knob. If you go over to the right, it goes to auxiliary one, which it's hard to see, but there's a USB drive right here and then a eighth inch aux port right over there. So you can choose each one. So you just go ahead and put a USB drive in and play some shows from that. I haven't used that. But if you go over one more, you have aux 2, which is really cool. That's located in the rear of the radio, which also gives you a USB port and an auxiliary port. So if you have a show loaded with like kit phrases, but you don't want to see the ugly looking um, thumb drive sticking out of the front of your radio, you can permanently mount it in the back of the radio and get to those shows really easily. Over here is what? literally sold me to this radio. It does have Bluetooth technology and the Bluetooth does work really well. So I would say um, probably about 40 feet reliably. I've used it at a couple shows for my cell phone. I have some phrases that I keep just in a folder on my um, iPhone that when people buy the car I can just launch um, different phrases wirelessly from my phone over to the Bluetooth and have conversations with people and people freak out especially little kids they absolutely love that stuff so um that's pretty much it the head unit is 40 watts rms out so if you don't have amplifiers that works well i do have amplifiers i have an amplifier going to my inside speakers and an amplifier going to my outside speakers 
So um, I wasn't using the built-in power, but I would imagine that it works pretty well. And then it also has a sub out, which a lot of these radios don't. So if you do have a subwoofer in your car and you need a um, specialized subwoofer out, this radio has it. But um, couldn't recommend it any better. I absolutely love this radio. When you get it in the car, it doesn't look out of place. It actually looks like it should be in an 82 Trans Am. So hopefully you guys like this review. Um, yeah, so hopefully next week we will be doing a review and showing you my outside speakers. But until then, see you guys next week.